I'm back. I'm making another video. Um, if you haven't taken the time to sit and watch any of the content that I've already put out, hi, my name is Nina, and um, today I'm going to be answering questions from the Q&A that I had open for a few days. Um, I did take some time to sit on the questions and think about it because I didn't want to answer things on the fly, give an answer that I wasn't committed to, so I did um, grab a notebook and I wrote down the questions and I jotted down um, some thoughts as far as my answers go. I am going to try to address the makeup related questions first. Um, that way, if you want to go ahead and skedaddle out of here and not finish the rest of the more personal stuff, um, you have the opportunity to do so. Um, so I guess, without further ado, me and these, I mean, just massive eyelashes, um, gonna jump right into it. Really? Okay. Wanna come say hi? So the first question that I'm going to answer is, um, how did I learn how to do makeup? I just practiced a lot. Another thing that I did was really try to challenge myself and um, approach the things that scared me the most. So um, bright colors and, you know, bold lips, um, just different things like that. I really took the time when I sat down and wanted to practice doing makeup and I would find a look that inspired me. I would either try to recreate it um, exactly as I saw it, or I would do something like my rendition of it. So I did not go to school for makeup. Uh, however, I do believe I have a really good education, learning from beauty influencers, learning from professional makeup artists, all the content available to me online. I am a visual learner, so I did have a really easy time uh, watching people make something happen and recreating it. Um, yeah, so mostly self-taught. My cat's falling off my lap. <laughs> I bought myself really good tools, uh, tried to invest money in those products that are going to last. The second question is, what are your top five favorite products probably mascara I'm really I'm really picky about mascara I love bad gal bang I do tend to cling to one certain type of product for a long time and use that constantly always have a fresh one on me um, until for whatever reason I feel like I need change or maybe it's not working as well anymore a good face wash um, I do use a physical exfoliant right now, the Clinique face wash that I have mentioned in previous videos. I find that it works really well to take away these little um, bumps. I think you can see, yeah, these little bumps that I get. Uh, it definitely helps to reduce those, make them go away. Another product that I love, that I right now can't foresee myself not using, is the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. Um, it just lays down so well on my skin. Um, it doesn't get pilly. It doesn't make things as I build it up on my face uh, react strangely. There's a lot of times that certain primers can like stick to whatever you layer on top of it. And if you make one wrong move and wipe on your face, it all slides off together. This is the one like holy grail primer that I have for right now. Foundation. I'm going to be using the Makeup Forever Reboot Foundation quite a bit because uh, it has wonderful skin like, you know, your skin but better coverage. It's glowy. It's buildable. Um, and it layers well with other products. Tarte from their Tardis line the clay paint liner. I get mine from the, the squeeze tube and I apply it with a brush. I actually laid that down underneath the black shadow that I have on my eyes today. Um, it just sticks down really well and it, uh, it doesn't flake, it doesn't smudge, it stays in place and it's amazing. The Becca Opal Highlighter. 
I use it all year round. It's compatible with the undertones in my skin, no matter if I'm tan, no matter if I'm pale as hell. It's always just the perfect highlight on my face um, with any look that I do. It's so nice. I was asked if I would do a skin routine or face shaving video. Um, absolutely. I'm totally down to like do a get unready with me video if that's what you want to see. So go ahead and drop something in the comments letting me know that you want to see a get unready with me and you want to see how I do my skincare, you want to see how I shave my face. Um, let me know. Next question is do I do concealer under my foundation or on top? Um, both. I do both. So if I have spots, like I have a couple spots over here, like a little hormonal breakout, some rosacea rosacea issues and um, I do a, a very lightweight concealer sometimes underneath my base because I want the hyperpigmentation the discoloration to go away same thing with my under eye because I have very dark under eyes um, I will put a small layer and then put foundation over and then do my uh, bronzing or contour and then you know another layer of concealer highlight I do want to know if that question was inspired by the Scott, Scott Barnes method, uh, because if it was, I would be very willing to show you a full face done with the Scott Barnes method. Um, he is the makeup artist for JLo. Uh, he does, you know, work on models, other celebrities, um, very high end type of quality makeup that he does. Um, but I like his method and I think it works best for me in the summertime because uh, it's more of a glowy look. If you would like to see a little quick tutorial done on that, drop that in the comments. Next question is what is my go-to look? So I do two things if I'm out of ideas or if I don't have time. Two things that I know I can get done quickly and successfully and that's going to be your run-of-the-mill black winged liner or I do a creamy, not white, but a very light color creamy shadow on the inside um, portion of my eyelid and then I will blend it out into a deep brown and do kind of like a smudged out, smoked out look that way with a nude lip. Um, if I'm doing the wing, I'm going to do a bold lip, so something red, something like a vampy kind of um, just deep, bold color. I am the type of person who does a heavy eye with a simple lip, or I do a simple eye with a bold lip. I don't personally like too much to be going on in my face. I think my face is too small, and my features are not pronounced enough for that. Um, now, if I wanted to put in a lot of effort and really carve out my face and do all that, I can do a really super beat down look and it would be cohesive. But it's not sensible for me on a regular basis to do that. I just don't feel like it's quite appropriate for my lifestyle and for the things that I go and do. So these are the rules that I kind of have myself live by. Favorite brand of makeup? Um, I think it's hard to like one brand. Shh, Penny. Mama's making a video. <laughs> Lulu. I think it's hard to like one brand entirely because I would have to be completely comfortable with their shade range as far as complexion products go. I would want a brand to be very, very inclusive and have the lightest of light to the darkest of darks and everything in between. As much work as you can put into to make everyone feel included, somebody's always gonna be left out. However, if it comes to quality, pricing, and things like that, I love Morphe. I love NYX Cosmetics. I use, I will continue to use a lot of that on this channel because their products are so accessible and they're so reliable. Um, you get exactly, if not more, than what you pay this for. This is hard for me to say because of how controversial he is and everything that is going on right now, if you are aware within the beauty community. But um, I think, as for quality goes, I love Jeffree Star's eyeshadows. Uh, the quality is, is really just incredible. The color stories in his palettes are always really, really impressive. And, um, you know, I just, 
I don't want to like him right now, but I still, I can't knock his shadows. I know. I love Anastasia Beverly Hills quality of their eyeshadows. I think Norvina is definitely killing it with her line. More higher end, Natasha Denona. Obsessed. I love Natasha Denona. I think Pat McGrath is absolutely amazing and she is a black owned business. My cat is determined to just have his cameo in this video. Who is my favorite YouTuber? So I love Bailey Sarian and all her videos. I watch her Saturday videos as well as her Monday videos. Those are the only times that she posts. On Monday, she does murder, mystery, and makeup Monday. And that's her basically sitting down, getting ready for her day or whatever event she's going to. And she talks about a true crime story. Um, it's highly entertaining to me. I think she's absolutely beautiful woman. I love her personality. I really admire her style. Uh, I think that if she and I were ever able to meet each other, we would probably get along really well. We have similar personalities, or so it feels from the videos that she puts out. Um, she's heavily tattooed. You know, she's just kind of like, uh, what I wish I could be. If I could have sat down and had Bailey's idea, like, I definitely would have done it. Um, but she's awesome. Her Saturday videos are more just like, get ready with me, let's chat about something. Um, that kind of thing. Somebody that's not makeup related, I like to watch videos regarding um, like art. So I do art restoration. I watch this girl, her channel is Drawing with Waffles. And uh, that's not literal by any means. It's just kind of like her little shtick. Um, and she is super cute. I believe she's my age, but she's just really dorky and she does amazing things uh, with her art. I love her process because she never truly goes in with a plan, so I've come to see, but she definitely does trust herself and her vision and this process of doing like train of thought kind of thing. And I admire that and I think that she's kind of inspired me with my makeup. I have a grip on color story. I have a grip on what things work well together, what really what really works on my face and what doesn't. Uh, other things that I like to watch on YouTube, I watch these guys. There's a couple different channels, but I watch these guys who somehow, I don't know what community is like trading MREs from different periods of time, but, um, and I mean, going back years, they sit down and they open up and sometimes eat items from these MREs that are like 50 plus years old. It's insane. Um, from all sorts of different countries, like it's, I don't know, it's crazy, it's interesting, it's weird. What is your favorite tattoo? Okay, so I love my moth. And let me show you. I have a death's head moth tattooed on my arm. I did not get this tattoo because of Silence of the Lambs, although I do really love that movie. The truth is I got into moths when I was first stationed in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. My first unit, I lived near a heavily wooded area and there was a very dense moth population. I kind of became one of those people where uh, it just became my thing. Just became my thing. And so now my friends and family will send me pictures if they stumble across one, you know, ask me what kind of moth something is and uh, really test my knowledge, like the catalog that I've created in my brain. Um, but yeah, my moth is my favorite tattoo just because that's kind of like a weird little hobby. I am working on the rest of my sleeve. There's a lot of, a lot of work left to be done on that. Um, so maybe once it's completely finished, I'll have a new favorite tattoo. Um, I'm hoping, I have a raven outlined on my back right now. I'm hoping by the end of it, the vision I have for my raven, that might be my next favorite tattoo, but we'll see what my artist can do. If I had to take the place of an actress or an actor in a movie, who would it be and what movie? That's the next question. So again, with the Quentin Tarantino, uh, I would be the bride character in Kill Bill, which is Uma Thurman. 
Um, I mean, who doesn't want to be a leading lady in the one of the greatest revenge films of all time doing badass martial arts stuff and like sword fighting? I would be Lady Arwen, of course. Oh, me and my Lord of the Rings, but I would. I would be Mrs. Aragorn. And like the the small, very small portion of like hopeless romantic that exists in my heart loves the fact that she would trade her immortal life for a mortal man. Um, how sweet, right? Cindy Lou Who in The Grinch. I feel like Hermione out of Harry Potter is like a given. Jodie Foster in Silence of the Lambs. I'm really into like criminal profiling and stuff. Um, once I finish getting my degree, whenever that will be, um, I do hope to do work in psychology, social work, something like that. Um, and since I am in the military, it's kind of been at the back of my mind to possibly go into profiling. Um, but that's if I want to continue working for the government and doing that with the FBI would, um, it would definitely be something to consider. Who else would I be? I love movies, so I could answer, I could go about this all day long, but Christina Aguilera in Burlesque, the outfits, the music, the makeup, that man, let's talk about it, you know? I would be her. Favorite music artists. I have such a wide interest when it comes to music. Um, I love TDE as a label. I have seen Schoolboy Q many times. Um, at this point, I love his entire discography. Um, I never got the chance to see him, but Mac Miller, of course, I've always been a I've always been a fan of Mac Miller. Um, I love Isaiah Rashad, like, a lot, a lot. I'm a really big Billie Eilish fan. I love Hozier. Um, both of them lyrically are just super impressive, and they hit me, like, right in the feels. I love Hozier because he is very politically charged, even though at first listen his music may not come across that way. Um, and he's also... Um, making calls for social justice essentially in a lot of his songs um and i just think you know expressing something that you are passionate about in in a way that only he seems to be capable of i mean his music i just i listen to him all the time any mood any place it just he he's i love him um billy eilish she has such an incredible voice it's beautiful it's haunting at the same time. Lyrics, passion, power behind the words, uh, that gets to me. My biggest fear. So I want to give kind of a disclaimer before I, I explain this. Um, I am very in tune to my senses. Um, I have a deep emotional connection with all five senses and my sensory memory is strong. I'm not religious. I am spiritual. So I do not believe in heaven or hell. Uh, and of course I bring this up because I'm about to approach the concept of death. But my biggest fear is that in life I will lose my senses. Um, I just think that would impact me in a way that I'll never recover from. <laughs> Literally, but emotionally. My fear is not dying. It's just that one day I will leave my earthly body and I may not ever get the opportunity to feel sun on my skin or, you know, wind through my hair or smell really good food cooking in the kitchen or a nice candle. Um, what it feels like to pet a soft animal. Um, just those things, music, looking at a sunset, hearing the ocean, those things that are so deeply impactful to me in my life um my fear is not quite dying it's just leaving my body and not getting the opportunity to indulge in those things anymore my pets so <laughs> they are determined to be in this video but i have four pets i have um two cats my house ornaments and i have two dogs i got jacks uh picked him up out of the woods 
named him after uh, Jax Teller from Sons of Anarchy because I was really into the show at that time. Um, I got Pharaoh so that he would not be alone. Um, he's about nine. I think Jax is six. Um, Pharaoh is not like a normal cat. He is very, very talkative, kind of acts like a dog, and at the same time kind of acts like a person. He's a strange little dude, but I love them both, and they have their own little relationship, and it works for them. Um, my dogs, I have my, my Penny, Princess Penelope. She's my girl. Her connection with me is special, I think, because she's the first you know, female dog I've ever owned on my own. Um, when I was a kid, I did grow up with a female dog, but it's different. Like I was a kid, you know, um, I've had the opportunity to break her of certain behaviors because she was a rescue and we've earned like a mutual respect with each other at this point. And so, um, it's just nice being at a place where we finally gotten to understand each other. So I love my Penny. She's a cattle dog and pit mix, I believe. I haven't gotten her tested, but I'm pretty sure. Lucius is just a straight up pit. Uh, he is big baby. He is so affectionate, so loving. Doesn't matter who you are. Um, he wants to cuddle. He wants to be in your lap. Like he just has no sense of being his own dog. Those are my babies. Do anything for them, do everything for them. Um, I love them. My favorite book or my current read? So this is going to be the last question that I answer and then I am going to leave you with just a couple little um, tidbits about what I have coming up next and um, uh, then we can wrap this up. So my favorite book, I don't have just one, of course. I can't just give a straight answer. I'm sorry. I'm complicated. Um, but I loved The Giver growing up. I loved Pictures of Hollis Woods growing up, Fahrenheit 451, really love that. Um, I am a massive Chuck Palahniuk fan. Um, as lighthearted and I'll say girly or just whatever it is that my interests can be that make me come across like real bubbly and uh, stuff like that, I have a really like dark and twisty interest as well. I love the way that he writes. I think his syntax um, his style of writing, like it all just, uh, it works for me. Um, so I love him. I read this book once and then as soon as I finished it, I read it again called The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. It's kind of a mouthful, but, um, it was written by a man who's from the UK and did a lot of work with people who are on the spectrum, had autism, Asperger. The story is about how he finds his neighbor's dog um, dead in her front yard with like a pitchfork stuck into it. And he gets fixated on trying to figure out who would have killed this dog and why. And it takes him on kind of a coming of age journey. Um, you get to explore just the mind of a person who's on the spectrum. Um, and I think that no better author could have done it because uh, reading into this man's history and the amount of work that he actually did with, um, you know, people who, who live on the spectrum. Um, it was just eye opening and it made me emotional, um, really moving, really powerful. I really highly recommend that book. Uh, if you ever want to take a glimpse at the world outside of yourself, um, I'm going to start The Collector. A movie was made about it. I've never seen it. Don't know how good it is. I didn't want to ruin it for myself. Um, but the book is published, I think, in 1963. And the movie was made in 2009. So if you're interested in checking out the movie version because you don't like to read, um, it seems like it's a very interesting story. The Collector is about a man who becomes infatuated with a girl and uh, basically kidnaps her and keeps her hostage is my, my get, like what I gather about that book. Yeah, those are my questions. And if you made it this far, geez, thank you. I have some things planned. I have this notebook here where I'm just, you know, constantly writing and filling in my ideas. I plan on doing a series 
So uh, I don't want to give away exactly what I plan on doing in that series, but um, I am trying to pull inspiration from books, movies, TV, music, art, anything. So if you have any suggestions, you have any comments, go ahead and drop those down below. Um, you know, let me know what you would be interested to see a series on. I'm open to absolutely anything. Um, I'm going to be doing a couple looks with the Jeffree Star Thirsty palette. I'm going to be posting um, IGTV videos uh, in response to the looks that I got where I shared that photo uh, of my eye space. And um, you guys responded to me with some looks. So I've got some cute ones and I am excited to recreate them. But those will be an IGTV video so that I can at you personally and give credit to you for designing that look um, and show you my best recreation of it. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff that I have that I want to do. Um, but I suppose I should go ahead and wrap this video up with my insight. Um, and my insight today is going to be um, don't be afraid to wear those bold colors don't be afraid to put on that bold lip that you would not normally wear don't be afraid to you know sit take the time blend out those shadows and get some practice in and then wear it out um wear that outfit that you're a little iffy on a little maybe insecure about wearing do it own it um take pictures of it post it uh, don't be afraid of what somebody is going to do or say in response to you being comfortable with yourself and doing something that's going to make you happy or that's going to make you feel beautiful. Do whatever the hell you want if it makes you feel good, if it makes you feel beautiful. That is my insight. Um, because... If you are not the main character, where is the story? And if somebody is staring at you and they have something to say about you, you're the main character, babe. So own it. I hope that you got to know a little bit more about me and that you are going to continue to uh, look for my content and stuff like that. Um, please like, comment, share, subscribe if you're not already. Um, talk about me to your friends. If your friends like makeup too and they want to hang out with somebody, um, tell them to come hang out with me when I post my videos. So with that being said, me and Pharaoh want to ask you to be beautiful, be nice to people, um, and yeah, come see me for the next one.